And now, Lifestyles Unlimited presents the Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Over the next hour, we unfold your map to financial freedom. You'll learn how to retire through investing in single family and multifamily real estate. You'll learn how to create cash flow and build wealth so you can have the time and money to live the lifestyle you want. Welcome to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. I'm Mike Harrison. And as always, we're working on your financial freedom. I want to thank you for joining us today. I've got a great show for you today. You're going to want to stick around for the entirety. I've got a wonderful guest, and his story is just flat out amazing. Uh, I know you're going to want to hear it. I know a little bit about this gentleman's real estate investment path, but I promise you I haven't heard all of it. Uh, it is a wonderful story. My guest today is Bill Miller. He's a great guy. He's a lot of fun to be around with. Just one of those people that's just one of the nicest guys you could ever meet. And he started investing in 1990. And just to tell you, I'm always amazed at the ability over time with real estate to compound wealth, how it compounds and grows and uh, just a tremendous success story. I'm going to let Bill share it with you. Bill, thanks for coming on the show today. Thank you, sir. I'm here. Bill, if you would, give us a little bit of background before we go into uh, your investment path. Well, I grew up on a farm in upstate New York, a dairy farm. Um, we were pretty poor. We went uh, school shopping once a year, and I had an older sister. And when I didn't fit in my jeans anymore, I got to wear my her hand-me-downs. And back then, the women... <laughs> wow. Jeans they had the zipper on the side, so it was kind of embarrassing to go to school with the, you know, with my sister's jeans on. But that was yeah. kind of our start. I'm sure you grew up. Uh, <laughs> you had to be pretty tough to handle that, so uh, it set you up for later in life. I'm sure it was. We I learned to farm. My dad was a hard worker. Uh, working became a uh, a very strong part of our lives. Well, how the heck did you end up uh, all the way down in Huntsville, Texas? Ah. Uh, graduated high school, uh, went to uh, Union College upstate New York for a year. Uh, that summer, I uh, I met a uh, – I was in the parking lot, and a guy drove up in his uh, maroon Lincoln Continental promising me I could get rich if I would invest uh, $2,000 in what turned out to be a pyramid scheme. And I begged my dad. He lent me the money. And uh, – I made two thousand dollars that summer as a as a you know twenty some kid twenty some year old kid, yeah. and then uh, uh, he wanted me to you know he he made up a, a payment schedule for me to pay it back and uh, I couldn't go back to college until I had the months saved up so I lost my college deferment since it was Vietnam War time, yeah and my number was six so I eventually got drafted and ended up at Fort Hood Texas. Is that right? Wow. Okay. Um, interesting. Yeah, the college deferment goes away. They call your number, and <laughs> there you are. You're now a proud member of the U.S. military. It was uh, U.S. Air Force. Is that correct? No, actually, at that point, uh, I chose the Army. I chose the longest uh, course they had, which was Russian language, and uh, I learned that <laughs> in uh, Washington, D.C., and then uh, – came to Fort Hood because the war was going to end any day, uh, hopefully, <laughs> which it did. Yeah. And uh, uh, that's how I got to Texas. Well, Bill, you're a clever guy, and we're going to see a lot of that um, when we get into your investment path, um, just your ability to see things that others don't see or can't see at the time, and just the fact that you took the longest course you could, uh, keep you out of, <laughs> you know, out of the bullets, out of harm's way, um, as long as you possibly could. Let's go to how'd you me, end up buying? Was it a condo? That was your first one, right? Or did you have anything before well, you got into the condo? Let me back up just one second because yeah. while I was at Fort Hood, uh, I met a, a warrant officer called Ruben Salazar, and he sat across the table from me one day and he said, "You know, Bill, if you buy a house, you have a house payment, and if you buy a duplex, you have somebody to help you make your payment." And then he multiplied it times four, six, eight, ten, and the light went off in my head back at age 21 or 22, and um, I actually did back in Fort Hood. I bought a fourplex. I bought another fourplex. I bought a trailer park, which don't ever do, and uh, uh, and then I eventually uh, uh, moved on and uh, 
went to seminary and became a, a chaplain, and that's how I got to Huntsville, Texas, in 1985. So Prison chaplain, correct? Yes. When I saw that on your resume, I, I was thinking to myself, my gosh, there's no issue within real estate that could <laughs> unnerve you after being a prison chaplain. I mean, everything's got to be small potatoes uh, dealing with, I'm, I'm sure, uh, some of the heavy stories uh, there. But, um, okay, so now you're in Huntsville, and you purchased this first condo. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, we had uh, Bible studies on Tuesday nights. I would come home from from the prison wired and my wife and kids were asleep and I'd be watching television and it'd be this uh, real estate infomercial trying to get me to send them, you know, a few hundred bucks to buy their books and tapes. So instead I went to the bookstore and I bought a couple of books and I learned about um, using other people's money, OPM, to uh, uh, start buying real estate and uh, learned about bank owned uh, property yeah. actually. Uh, the savings and loan debacle had happened at that time, and the savings and loans were going under. Banks were owning real estate that they didn't want to own. They wanted to lend on. Yeah. And so that's how I learned about these condos and apartments. Brilliant. Yeah, so right uh, right time, right place. Um, I think you started <laughs> somewhere around the time Lifestyles Unlimited started in uh, 30 years ago, 1990, around 1990, 1988, I guess, somewhere in there. So that's about when you started uh, with your condos. Same time. Yeah. And you're learning things that Dell teaches today um, just from a book. And we, we always say that the knowledge we have, there, there's no secret sauce to what we're doing. It's all out there. And people have been doing it uh, for years, for years and years and years. We've just essentially defined it down to a strategy and a system. And that's what we teach here at Lifestyles Unlimited. I'm Mike Harrison. If you have any questions or comments about today's show or how to get started investing in real estate, please send me an email, and I do respond personally to every email I get. My email address is askmike at l-u-i-n-c dot com, askmike at l-u-i-n-c dot com. I have a guest on today's show, Bill Miller, and Bill started about 30 years ago investing in cash-flowing real estate. Um, he had picked up some tips and ideas along the way. He'd read some books about it and started his path. And I will tell you, it is it never ceases to amaze me. And and I commonly I'll say that there's a fourth type of income, and that's compounded income through real estate. And and Bill's story is definitely one of those stories about compounded wealth and income through real estate. Bill, take us back. So you, we were right around the savings and loan crash. Banks had a ton of property that they didn't want. Uh, you were in the right place at the right time. You had a strategy. How did you get that first property? Well, I found out that this bank owned these uh, condo units, and uh, I actually was able to buy the last two that they had. Um, it's interesting because the banking industry was in such a mess. I was supposed to close on Thursday. The bank called me up and said, can you come in and, and close this deal on Wednesday? I went in on Wednesday, bought the two condos, and the feds closed the bank on Thursday. And uh, they were wow. they were done. <laughs> was there no note, no mortgage on the two condos? I was trying to look that up. I think the mortgage had to have been with that bank anyway, so it got switched to wherever that bank happened after that. Okay, so they transfer it. Uh, so they get you to come in a day early. They know they're going to close. Obviously, they didn't share that with you. Um, no. <laughs> where'd you get the seed money to buy those first two properties? Oh, well, I was a poor kid with nothing. And uh, my wife's uh, father had passed away, and he had no insurance, but he had checked a little box when he worked for the government at Fort Hood that if he did die while he worked, they would get he would get twice his annual salary. So we ended up with a $44,000 check. For the first time in my life, I ever had a penny or two together. And I began using that as down payment money to start buying these units. Wonderful. And uh, I, I love your thought at the time because I think most people, uh, the conventional thought would be, okay, we finally have some money, now we need to save it or set it aside, and then you're putting it into properties, and obviously uh, your wife was on board doing what you're doing. At any time, so you're buying properties when everybody, banks are trying to dump properties, did you have any um, any fear or any uneasiness about what you were doing? 
I had looked at the fact that uh, I just looked at the cash flow, <clears throat> even though I mean my salary was like twenty one, twenty two thousand a year. Yeah. But uh, I, I looked at the you know it's going to rent for four hundred a month, and you know the payment's going to be this. Um, I can handle you know things that break if they need to, and I just dove in knowing that it would or believing that it would cash flow. Rule number one: must cash flow. There it is. <laughs> uh, brilliant, and that's what I'm talking about. Bill, you're seeing things that other people weren't seeing, and I'm looking at your your notes here, and you didn't stop at two. Um, share with us what you did over the next six to eight weeks. Okay, I had uh, one of the books that said drive around town and look for a four by eight uh, plywood, you know, for sale sign, and that's what banks would put up there. And I found a ten unit. A townhome and a 12-unit uh, apartment complex in town with this sign in front, and I went directly to the bank itself and said, "Hey, I want to buy that." And uh, the feds were making them lower the price until they could get them off their books. So um, they had that for like 360 thousand, and then it got. To, anyway, I I offered them 300 thousand for it. Signed the contract. They said fine. They financed it, 10 percent down, 10 percent interest, and. Uh, and boom, I owned a, a, a tenplex. But I'd already figured out that we're going to close this thing on June the 6th. I'm going to get 10 times the deposits in cash, and I'm going to get 10 times the first month's rent in cash, and my first payment's not due until the end of the month. So I gave them 30000 and I got, let's say, ten grand back. And then on the 29th of the month, I went to the second bank, and I bought the 12 unit and did the same thing. And but I didn't have quite enough cash, so I used I laid some of my credit cards down, got enough cash, went to closing, and then I got the money back from the bank and moved on. Flying by the seat of your pants, but you had a plan. <laughs> um, so, I, I mean, talk about cutting it down to just a few days to get your payments in and uh, counting on people to pay the rent and and all that to to make this work. But um, I love. I love creative financing. I love stories like this because this is how people become successful. Um, it, did you say the bank that was a ten percent interest rate? They were both ten percent down, ten percent interest. Yes. And no fear right. at the time. No, I mean ten percent was a good rate <laughs> at that time. <laughs> car, awesome. car loans were thirteen or fourteen percent. You know. <laughs> yeah, and people are freaking out today because we're at six and a half. Um, and what I tell people all the time, that interest rate really is a small part of what we do. It's just one factor in the entire equation. And if you follow the rules, you know, must cash flow, if you stick with that, um, you're going to be fine. So interest rate is just a small factor. When you're putting the deal together and you're analyzing the deal, uh, understand all of the numbers um, that are coming in to make this happen. So. You had the 10 unit, you had the 12 unit, and then you had the two other condos. So uh, you had 24 units in all. Did you stop there? No, uh, I began um, at the condos. I be no, One of the other fellows had bought 12 of those condos also from that same bank. Yeah. And eventually, uh, I, I think he had nine maybe. And uh, so eventually I... Well, i tell you what I did. What I did was, uh, to make sure that these condos were run correctly, I became the HO, HOA director myself. So I now had contact with all the owners, and I contacted him and said, hey, you want to sell your condos to me? And uh, uh, he said, sure. And uh, so I bought those, those nine from him. I bought another one here, there, and by the time I – finished, there were 64 condos there, and I own 28 of them. Well, one of the reasons we don't typically recommend condos at Lifestyles Unlimited is because you mentioned it, the homeowner association and not having the control. But heck, Bill, if you're the director and you own the majority of the condos, you're the bus driver. So Absolutely. you're able to make all the decisions, and um, you're not worried about some strange impact fee coming in or uh, some work that needs to be done because you're in front of it the entire time. That's a that's a brilliant idea. So 28 condos, the 10 unit, and the 12 unit. Uh, and what time frame was that? Um, I know you got the the 24 within two months, but how how long did it take you 
but by the time you had the other condos as well? Uh, I kept buying them right up until uh, maybe two or three years before I joined Lifestyle. Um, and uh, because, I mean, it started out, they were 24000 a piece when I bought them, and uh, I just sold the last one for 130 Beautiful. Uh, we're going to stop right there. We'll pick it up on the other side. You're listening into the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Got questions? Call Lifestyles Unlimited at 855-497-4335. The Real Estate Investor Radio Show continues next. There is a dream killer here somewhere today. You're going to run into somebody who's going to tell you this stuff doesn't work. Like Vinette said, it's a scam. This is probably a multi-level marketing program. Somebody is going to tell you it doesn't work because you're the wrong race, the wrong age, the wrong sex, the wrong sexual preference, the something or other. And this is all set up so rich people can be successful and all you poor people can't. And if you believe that, they've won. But if you don't, you win. Don't believe the dream killers. Start winning today with the Lifestyles Unlimited free workshop. Get the knowledge you need to replace your income in two to five years, and then find out how to take action. Register for the free online workshop at lifestylesunlimitedworkshop.com. Welcome back to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. I'm Mike Harrison, and as always, we're working on your financial freedom. If you have any questions for me or about how to get started as a real estate investor, please send me an email, and my email address is askmike at luinc.com, askmike at luinc.com. And I also want to remind you there's four ways to consume the radio content from Lifestyles Unlimited. The easiest way, the one I use most often, is your podcast app on your smartphone. Just subscribe to Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. It'll upload automatically. So if you're driving anywhere or in your free time, you can just put the show on, tooth it up, and listen to it as you're driving or taking a walk or wherever you go with your smartphone. We also have our own YouTube channel. Go to YouTube, type in Lifestyles Unlimited, type in Dell Walmsley. Ton of content there, not just the radio shows. Obviously, the website, lifestylesunlimited.com. And most of you may not realize this, but Anywhere you are that has internet access, if you know the Lifestyles Unlimited show is on, you can just live stream it. Go to that radio station's website, dial it in, and click on Listen Now, and you can listen to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show or the Dell Walmsley Radio Show, wherever you are, as long as you have internet access. My guest on the show today is Bill Miller. He's been an investor for about 30 years, started way before Lifestyles Unlimited, but what's What's really neat is Bill has discovered some of our rules, essentially, of investing. And and the main rule is must cash flow. And Bill would look at these properties, and he knew that they would cash flow. And he used that cash flow to compound his wealth and create that cash flow snowball and just acquiring more properties, more properties, property after property after property. He also utilized creative financing along the way. So, Bill, when we left off... We were talking about you kept acquiring condos. You had that 10 unit, that 12 unit, then the two condos, and then you bought 28 condos in this property, and you just kept acquiring them. How were you getting the money to buy these properties? Well, I financed all with the same bank, uh, First Financial here in in Huntsville, and they're across Texas in different towns, a small bank. And uh, I knew the, the banker. We developed a relationship. Uh, at one point, uh, I, I had paid some of these off or, or down very far, and I used the equity in the ones I had as the down payment money in the new ones. For instance, I'm looking at one that I sold um, August 15th. I purchased it in uh, July of '09. My cash out of pocket to buy this unit was $363, which means I have a 27,205% return on my cash out of pocket. For say that again, Bill. Say how much down and say what your return is. 
Uh, I, I, it only cost me three hundred sixty-three dollars to you know pay the filing fees or whatever to get this yeah. unit because I used the down payment money. Uh, I used the equity in another one. Yeah. On this one, which yeah. which comes up with a twenty-seven thousand percent return on my money when I sold it for one hundred and twelve thousand net. Absolutely incredible, and that's just <laughs> one property, and you had dozens of them. Right. How many do you still own now, Bill? Uh, I of the condos I own, I think it's seventeen. I've sold seventeen this year um, because I'm putting the money into passes because I'm. I realized that um, you know I had been. I've been. I was living for the cash flow. I wasn't living for the equity. Yeah. Um, I'm seventy. It's, eventually, this stuff needs to go to my kids. Um, once I went to lifestyle, I realized. You know, on the actual debt equity, I'm only making five to seven percent on it anyway. Yeah. Um, not on what I put. In. I mean, what I put in, for what I put in it, I was making a huge amount of money. But you know, when you think about the actual equity, I was only making four to six uh, percent. So you came to Lifestyles and you learned about debt equity. It's not doing anything for you. Let's put that equity to work. And essentially, it sounds like that's what you're doing now. How did you find Lifestyles Unlimited? Actually, uh, when I was in the uh, Air National Guard, uh, a fellow named Brian Hubble, who's always uh, uh, clicking on uh, and mentioning on Facebook all the time, uh, he was a friend that worked down the hall for me. We would talk about real estate. He knew about lifestyle. He introduced me to it, and I went to the meeting in November just as COVID was hitting. Uh, Here in Dallas-Fort Worth. In Dallas-Fort Worth, yes, sir. Yep, I think that's about the time that uh, I met you at, at one of those case studies around that time. Were you skeptical at all about lifestyles, or what was your attraction? I mean, you were doing pretty darn good on your own. Well, um, the 10-unit and 12-unit were not only paid off, there was no um, depreciation anymore. I had owned them for so long. Uh-huh. And they were making me, you know, $20,000 a month, whatever. But uh, once I realized about the debt equity, I did the figure sitting on my lap. I walked to the back of the room. I paid my money. I, Monday, I went to the bank. I borrowed $1.5 million, and I've been putting it in passive deals ever since. <laughs> Gosh, it's um, just the, your delivery on, you know, very dry delivery. But, Bill, what you've done <laughs> is you've been incredibly successful um, doing this all on your own. And then you come to Lifestyles Unlimited, and you see – a strategy to essentially just maximize everything that you have uh, have had already accomplished. Um, was there any shock moments in that two-day financial freedom seminar for you, besides the debt equity? Um, Dave Fisher is always a shock. <laughs> yeah. Yes, he is. Um, uh, other than that, uh, I don't think so. Just the fact that I realized I needed to change – well, the, changed how I was doing it. Uh, it had worked fine, but there was a way to do more. Yeah, time to change gears and become a passive investor. And I, I think both you and I, I, I'm a passive investor as well. Uh, I mean, there's just nothing better than being a passive investor. I mean, literally, uh, we find uh, a go-getter, a lead investor um, that has the skill set to manage and run an apartment community, actually run the business. They're not necessarily managing the apartment community, some of them on the small ones. But being a passive investor is fantastic. We write you a check, and then we get the returns quarterly or when they do the refinance or sell. And speaking of that, you sent me some information on that property in Mobile, Alabama, um, if that Park West. Would you share that with the listener, Bill? Sure. That's the okay. So I'm in 30 deals now um, since I joined, and this was the actually this was the very first deal uh, that I joined, which was uh, in uh, during COVID. And uh, I put uh, what did I put into that? Where's my numbers? Um, I put 250 thousand into it, and I got 180 thousand gain in 27 months. So Amazing. what that works as an annualized 25%. Yeah, fantastic. And who wouldn't want 25% uh, return? Essentially, well, it's all tax-free until the sale, and then there's some capital gains 
but you're offsetting those capital gains with the depreciation uh, on a lot of the other properties once you get this going. Yeah. Actually, I need to go back on that. It, had, it was a 60% gain, but during the time that I owned it, I paid interest on the 250 So I didn't have cash laying around. I never had cash laying around. If there's ever cash laying around, it goes into a property. Yeah. So – I had so it it gained twenty five percent annualized over the fact that I was paying interest on having borrowed that two hundred fifty thousand in the first place. I've done something very similar. I did a, uh, a HELOC at two point nine nine. This is a couple of years ago on my primary mm-hmm. property. Pulled a hundred out uh, and put it into an investment that has a twenty eight percent annualized return. So I'm netting twenty five percent or somewhere in there, netting twenty six something. Something along those lines, but people, when I share that, that people that aren't real estate investors, they think I'm a lunatic. They're like, "Wait, you borrowed a hundred <laughs> grand on your house?" And I'm like, "Yeah, give me three percent money all day long because I can go make double digit returns that are tax free." I'm Mike Harrison. I'd like to remind you of our Wealth and Passive Income Expo and Masters Tour. The dates are February 15th through February 18th, just around the corner. It's going to come quick. Irving, Texas, save that date, lock it in, and you can get more info at wealthandpassiveincomeexpo.com. You, I'll be there. My friend Bill that I have on the show today. Bill, I'm sure you're going to be at the expo, correct? Absolutely. It's a lot of fun, and I want to remind the listener that Master's Tour portion will sell out quickly. If you want to come look at multifamily properties, that, that what Bill invests in passively, it's what I invest in passively. If you'd like to tour some of those properties, that Master's Tour is for you. You can get more information at wealthandpassiveincomeexpo.com. So I've got Bill on the show today. Bill began investing over 30 years ago. It's incredible just how his wealth has compounded. He had a plan. He persevered. He stuck with it. He had the uncanny ability to see things that even bankers couldn't even see. He realized that properties needed to cash flow for him to invest in it. And he just kept doing that. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. He discovers Lifestyles Unlimited. He says, hey, it's time for me to change gears. I'm going to transition from being an owner of properties into investing passively in properties and really the hardest thing we do as a passive investor is track down the deal, right? You've got to find the deal, find the lead that's putting the deal together. Uh, the investment, essentially, the syndication, if you're outside of Lifestyles Unlimited, the syndication. And then you look at it and decide whether this is something you want to invest in. So, Bill, you're making that move now from being an owner to passives. Is there anything in particular you look for in a multifamily property to invest in? I think probably the most important thing is going to the uh, case studies and the other uh, programs they have and meeting people and getting to know them, uh, listening to them present their their properties, uh, watching how they've worked in the past. And there's a, there's a trust factor in, I trust this fella, I trust his mentors, I trust uh, um, the, the other people that I know that have invested in his properties before. And and so that's that's all part of it. Uh, I just believe it works. I believed it worked since you know since I was a kid, and uh, I'm just jumping in. Bill, I agree with you on the trust factor because a lot of times I think we overanalyze the property and underanalyze the person putting the deal together, whether it's a husband and wife team or um, you know a solo individual that's putting it together. And really, for me, that investment is more about the person. I'm investing in the person, not yet. I mean, technically, I'm investing in a property, but really, it's the person. It's the it's the quarterback or the jockey or, or whatever analogy you want to use. And there is a trust factor. And we also have something called the white paper that is essentially it's a kind of a, a standard operating procedure that we ask our leads to follow when they put these deals together. Because outside of Lifestyles Unlimited, there'll be a, a fee, a maintenance fee, a construction fee, um, a, a fee that goes to the lead when they sell it, um, waterfall payments in there. There's just so much, I don't want to say shady because it's, it's, um, it's out there and it's commonplace, but you just don't see that at, at Lifestyles Unlimited. So Bill, um, geographically, in your multifamily properties, uh, 
no particular area that's your favorite? I know you're in Texas, but you're also in different states. Um, it's yes, uh, like Phoenix. I wanted to get in Phoenix because I hear it's you know growing and you know fast like like this. But uh, most of them, I I got out a map and put them all on there, and yeah, most of them are in Texas. I think I went into Cincinnati and and a couple other places as well. Okay. Um, tell me about your keys to success, Bill. How'd you make it happen? As far as lifestyle? Well, it's as far as your real estate uh, investment portfolio. Um, oh, there's, it, there's one word. Whole. It's There's one word. It's called start. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I mean, just you just got to do it. You know, they say over and over again, 70, 80% of the people that have the opportunity do nothing. And you just got to go do it. It's there's there's no reason why every single person that doesn't come every person that comes to a a class should be able to go out and buy a property in the next month because if they have a job and they have some a credit score they also have either uh, debt equity in their house or somewhere they've got some money and they could go out and buy a house next week People can make it happen. They just have to set their mind to it. Um, I'm floored by the fact that 65% of us own our own house here in America. We have a mortgage or we own it outright. Yet the the number, the percentage of people that own that second property, not a vacation property, but an an Mm. actual investment property, that's only 6.7% of us, Bill. Um, Wow. Did you, you know we were rare, but did you know we were that rare? (laughs) <laughs> no, I didn't. No. <laughs> yeah, less than one in ten. But just like you said, it it's so if you if you do the deal right, it's so rewarding, um, and it's it's amazing just how it compounds. Um, Bill, let's go back to those early days because you just chugged along, chugged along, chugged along. At uh, at any point, was there any? Um, and maybe two thousand eight, two thousand and ten, you can hit on that but was there any point to where you just said to heck with it i'm getting out of this or i'm going to sell it or share with us some of your thoughts on just the uh the years of owning these properties i never thought of that in fact for it i mean the cash flow just kept coming i would do whatever i wanted to of course i'm cheap i, I drove the same you know 2013 pickup truck that i spent thirteen thousand dollars on for you know, 10 or 12 years because I didn't waste money. Every time I had pennies, I put it into buying another one. I ended up having 60 doors. I do have to say one thing right now. I say the word I a lot, yeah. and my wife's going to listen to this, and it's my wife and I. I just want to make that clear. <laughs> <laughs> Team effort. We're a partner. She owns these two. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, did you self-manage? Absolutely. Everything was self-managed. Now, in the last three years, we moved, or five years, we moved away from the properties. And uh, so I had a person on the ground that did, the, you know, that worked for me down there and kind of managed them for me. Right, because you still have some assets there in, in Huntsville that we mentioned earlier that you're um, slowly right. selling those and investing passively. Right, I'm selling them. In the, and I, I got my tax return back. I owed the, Uncle Sam totally for last year, $96, which was actually a very tiny little bit. Uh, I have replaced every single bit of cash flow for all of those those units with the deals that have uh, uh, sold or refied already this year. Wow. $96 to Uncle Sam. You're, you're, uh, it's, uh, well, next year, you, you might actually get some money back. Yes. I mean, one of the reasons I went to lifestyle the first way is because I had the depreciation was gone. I was making so much money. I wrote Uncle Sam a $40,000 check at the end of whatever it was, 2018 or something. Right. And I said, this is this is wrong. So lifestyles helped me get rid of that in a hurry. Yeah. If you set the properties up properly, you get to depreciate them and little to no tax. And obviously you had for, for everything that you have coming in to only have $96 uh, tax bill to Uncle Sam's uh, impressive. Uh, I love it. And I love David Fisher will share the story how, I mean, he got several thousand back from the IRS um, just a couple of years ago on, on a very successful year that he had within real estate. Bill, would you describe any of what you've done along the way as complicated or difficult? No, I wouldn't say so. It's uh 
Well, difficult. What's the most difficult thing? Um, I I wouldn't say it's difficult. It's uh, uh, yeah, no, it's easy. <laughs> yeah, it is. There's there's not a lot to it. It's not people that don't know don't own real estate think that your phone's ringing off the hook all night, and that's just not the case. I mean, if you fix everything and it's functional and it's running and you put a good person. Mm-hmm in the property they want to live there if you find the right person don't get somebody that's running from some situation get somebody that wants to be there they're happy being there um, and you're going to be just fine so bill how has your life changed in the last few years um, with real estate investing in the last few years it's been moving away from the owning the properties to the passive i want to get all the properties and part of it is Part of the properties are going to go to. I've got two kids, and you know half of everything I have, of course, will go to each of them. Yeah. Um, uh, my daughter lives about an hour and a half from those properties, and some of those properties may stay uh, as they are, and I not sell them, and they go to them. And then the uh, the passive deals may go to my son, who has his full time job and raising their kids, and I'll teach him how to do the lifestyle thing and keep keep that going. So. Uh, the biggest change is I want to start traveling and doing what some of these other guys are doing and, you know, really get enjoy the lifestyle instead of being, you know, managing real estate anymore. Yep. And that's going to come with being a passive. You're going to have more time on your hands uh, than you know what to do with. And the fact that you have the manager on the remaining properties and that's your transition, uh, just an incredible story of success, Bill. I want to thank you for coming on the show today and sharing your information of, of how you, Literally, it's it's a wonderful story. You saw, you saw the end game on these properties that other people couldn't see. You picked them up for pennies on the dollar, essentially, um, and then mm-hmm. you transitioned that into incredible cash flow and an incredible real estate portfolio. So, Bill, really appreciate it. For the rest of you out there, I want you to remember, just like Bill said, it's not the money, it's the lifestyle. My name's Mike Harrison. Make it a great day. The information and opinions you hear on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show are those of the host, guests, and callers. The Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented constitutes an endorsement, recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.